Before we start, again, a huge round of welcome to everyone that's contributed. These are just some of the names that we have here. But the Argo community as a whole has grown a lot. And there's a lot that we have done. We've come a long way. So I usually start with what are the key stats that we want to talk about, right? So we look at the number of contributors. Phenomenal growth in the number of contributors, and this is just in the last year. Over 33% growth in the number of people that are contributing to the project in all shapes, forms, right? It doesn't take much to contribute to Argo. By the way, even if you don't write code, I was watching so many document mistakes last night. I was, I was itching to start correcting all of the mistakes, right? So you can do that as well, by the way, OK? Uh, if we start looking at the number of stars we're growing, I really want to see it get to 100,000. So please, talk to your friends, families, you know, everyone. Start moving. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, sometimes I look at this and I say, you know, with the amount of growth and the number of people using it, why are stars not growing? And I think someone told me, like, oh, it's, it's laissez-faire now. You know, Argo's successful, so we don't go and hit the star button anymore. I'm like, OK. But I'd still like to see it go there, you know? And, uh, and then we look at, you know, the, the number of forks, right? Again, if you start looking at it, this is phenomenal growth, right? So, you know, huge round of applause to, you know, all of the you know, contributors, the community, because without them, this would not be successful, right? Um, also, uh, I think Argo was kind of unique in the way we started, you know, uh, looking at who was actually using Argo. So if you're familiar with the Argo GitHub repo, uh, you know, there's a file there, and we, we asked everyone that was using Argo to go in and publicly reference themselves, right? So in 2022, we had 380 companies that actually publicly referenced themselves, saying they were using Argo. Yeah. A lot of, lot of names and brand names. And as I look at it today, 2023, the number's grown. We now have 400, over 500 companies almost using Argo, right? So the, the growth of this is amazing. And then if I start looking at the number of institutions that are represented, it's again huge, right? So when I start thinking about this, and uh, I, I talk to a lot of the you know, contributors, this is all because of you. This is because of the community. It's also because of the product. And I call Argo a product, by the way. I know it's an open source project. But we've always looked at it as it's something to be consumed by everyone. So how do you build it in a manner that actually looks like another product? And that includes everything. It includes the resiliency, the safety, the user experience. You know, how do people get on board and how do people come together? So this is really, really good. Again, huge round of applause, please. Thank you. Now, this is the first year that Argo actually has uh, been a graduated CNCF project. Right? So in the first year, you can see we have seen a number of things. First of all, it is the third highest project in terms of PR authors. Okay. We now have over 245 contributions to the project. Okay. Again, this is huge. Right? And it's not slowing down. We see a tremendous amount of growth as we're growing. But when we start looking at what is it helping, how is it actually helping uh, you know, everyone innovate? And actually, I know all of you come from very, very different companies, different spheres, different domains. Right? And the fundamental things that we start with is the first thing is reducing deployment issues, right? Uh, faster detection. The, if you start looking at the observability metrics that we've been put into Argo, being able to look at your environment and detect issues. This is really the fundamental thing. Um, you know, I'm representing, you know, uh, of course, Intuit here. Uh, it is, you know, uh, we use Argo everywhere. But this is the one thing. One of the things that we measure is our mean time to detect issues across, you know, our, our uh, deployments. And we've seen a tremendous increase, you know, uh, in how fast we can increase and detect issues, whether it's in deployment, production, you know, as we move faster. Right? The other thing is actually, you know, increasing the velocity. As companies, more and more companies start thinking about their cloud native deployments and really building the platform on which all of their products are going to run, uh, this is going to become important, right? How do you take all of your developers? Uh, we have 7,000 developers at Intuit, for example. How do I make them fast? How do I make them you know, really, really productive without really understanding all of the things that they would you know, have under the covers? 
So these are some of the things that I find as I talk to the community and I talk to other leaders. Uh, what Argo is really helping them do, Argo CD in particular, is really about making things fast, really reducing the burden from the developers uh, to deploy faster, to deploy with confidence, to deploy with security in place. Right? And then the last thing is really about abstracting. You know? Because as you get bigger, as you start having these deployments, um, it's still hard. Kubernetes is not easy still when you start deploying it in large environments. So really, how do you abstract the key concept and the services and abstractions and experiences from your lay developer so that everyone doesn't need to know what a pod disruption budget is or how are you going to auto scale? And so this is one thing I think that we need to start focusing on because the deployment portion that Argo does is amazing you know, in order to be able to do this. But these are just some of the ways where you know, we're going to make it a lot easier as we move forward. Okay? So, what have we done over the last year? There are a number of things that I want to talk about. Right? Um, I talked about Argo being a product. Last year, we actually focused on resiliency and security. Uh, in particular, we achieved the, what I call, by the way, SLSA I learned you know, earlier this year. It's, pronounced, it's called Salsa. It's our supply chain level of uh, software architects, right? Artifacts, sorry. Uh, but we achieved level three provenance last year. Uh, and this is done by the CNCF, who actually was conducted, you know, an effort by the CNCF to actually take Argo CD, put it through its paces, through external organizations to figure out how secure it was. Uh, and, you know, there's a number of things that we did last year, right? We have adopted the Open SSF scorecard. We actually utilized the CLO monitor security score of 100% last year. You know, and this is, again, to give enterprises the confidence that it can be deployed in production with all of the governance and security artifacts built in. Okay. There's a lot of other things that we've done along the way. But when I start thinking about platforms, and platform engineering in particular, you know, what I talked about is extensions that we're doing. Right? So last year, we introduced our metrics extension, which allows you to look from an observability standpoint what is happening in your environment. How do you get plugged in to look at your environment and see what's going on? This is a huge, huge uh, benefit for if you're managing large clusters, you're managing large deployments, you know, and you want to see what's going on in those environments. The extension, uh, you know, form, by the way, allows us to actually, allows the community actually to contribute different extensions in the long run. Right? So this is how you essentially grow the platform and essentially grow the ecosystem over time. Right? Our Argo rollouts feature being rolled back, rolled forward, right, with, uh, and I'll talk more about where we're heading next, but in terms of being able to look at analytics and, and do this is going to be critical as well, okay, right. And the last thing is really around making it easy, making it easy for people to use, to adopt. The UI extensions, the, you know, the, the user interface extensions that we've done, these are amazing. By the way, this is what makes Argo so successful, is that it has a very, very powerful UI, and we keep improving it and extending it. Right? So when I talk about product, the productization of Argo, or Argo being a product, without all of these things, it would not be as successful. Right? So again, thank you to everyone for everything that we've done. No contribution is small. Again, just a little highlight of all the things that have gone on in the pro program and the project and all the people that have been involved. Again, I urge all of you, if you have not made a contribution, why don't you make it a goal? Before you leave KubeCon, make a contribution to the Argo GitHub repository. Again, very simple, by the way. Okay. You don't have to write code if you don't write code, but you can do a lot of things to contribute to the community. Okay. And, uh, and again, thank you for the community. Okay. So what's next? Two things, I'll highlight two things that we do. You've all have heard about Gen AI, you've all heard about AI, you know, AI ops is the new buzz in the platform world. And this is where I think we're gonna really start focusing uh, the vision and the roadmap for Argo. Right? How do we make it easy to do things like auto scaling? How do we do progressive delivery? How do we detect and isolate problems, right? How do we detect security breaches? There's a lot of stuff that we're gonna be doing here which is going to be very interesting. Right? So stay tuned for this roadmap because this really is going to set the stage for what we do in the next two years. Okay. Secondly, 
when we talk about simplified experiences, abstracting all of the intricacies of Kubernetes and how you deploy and what you do. This has been a journey that we've been on, and this we're going to be doing a lot more. How do you reduce your ingress? How do you improve security? How do you left shift security into this thing? Right? What about resources? You know, how do you provision them? What do you do? Right? How do you get visible into these things? Right? So that's going to be key. Right? So these two themes are going to be the focus for us as we head into it. Uh, by the way, it is being used a lot. Argo actually does get used in the ML ops and the, you know, the AI ops community a lot today. Uh, and Argo workflows is actually a core uh, driver for a lot of the ML pipelines that are driven in large companies today. Right? So you'll be seeing a lot of this today. I know, and a lot of talks actually throughout KubeCon uh, focused around this. Okay. Now, I also wanted to mention one thing. There's a lot that goes on. There's a huge community that is coming together. There is a lot of companies, by the way, of a lot of vendors that are actually productizing and using Argo today and helping customers, right, make it big. Right. And that's the goal. We really want this community to grow, not just from a contributor and a maintainer perspective, but also, you know, vendors that are actually helping other companies to adopt Argo and use it and make it easy. Right? So one of the things that we have done is we're actually starting a training and certification program. Uh, it was built collaboratively with uh, a lot of companies, uh, Acuity leading the charge on this, so thank you. And uh, it's in beta today, so please you know, scan it, go to the beta uh, program, get on board, you know, we want to get it into production and really start a certification and training program for Argo. So this will help you in your companies. It'll help you as you look for jobs, maybe, you know, but to have the certification behind you that you actually know and understand and how to use and deploy Argo. Okay. Right. Okay. With that, I want to give it back to Dan, but again, a huge round of applause for our sponsors because this is a huge event. It takes a lot to run this. Okay. So thank you. I give it all to Dan.